Hi there, I'm Janelle Lawrence, the Urban Teacher, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be going over how to implement CSR in your classroom. If you want a general overview of CSR or an introductory video to CSR, please watch my previous video. It is linked in the description box. CSR stands for Collaborative Strategic Reading, and that is a set of instructional strategies aimed at improving reading comprehension through um, teaching students how to properly acquire new vocabulary or to decipher it when they see it in the text, teaching students how to get the gist or main idea of any section that they read. It even goes as far as helping students develop questioning techniques as well as um, synthesizing skills. Also, um, really good with discussion and collaborative work, where it's, it's, it's in the name. CSI is broken into three stages, before the reading stage, during the reading stage, and after the reading stage. Each of these stages have a set of deliberate instructions that you, the teacher, must teach to your students in order for CSR to be effective. Do not try to teach all the stages in one week. I am not even gonna try and show it to you in one video. Today, all I'm focusing on is before the reading stage, all right? So don't don't try and do it all at once. Don't even try to do it all at, in a week. Students are not gonna get it. You're gonna confuse them. You're gonna confuse yourself. Be deliberate and teach them piece by piece. So today, all we're looking at the first stage before the reading. Because CSR is all about reading, many people skip the before the reading stage. However, this is very crucial. When you choose a book, you look at the title, you look at the image on, in, on the cover, you turn it over, you might read the little blurb on the back. That is all before the reading techniques. And as good readers, we do it naturally. But research shows many students who are struggling with reading do not have that um, culture of reading at home. They did not develop these natural skills, well these skills that I find natural to me. So we as educators have to explicitly teach our students to preview the text. I just want to point out, see us, this preview the text part, this before the reading part, is the only part of CSR that is really teacher-led. We're going to teach our students how to do the different stages of CSR and the different techniques, but once they have those strategies down pat, we lead them to their collaborative groups to get the work done. The before the reading stage is one part that we do not leave to the kids 100%. Like We teach them how to do it, but we are always previewing the text with them. So before you read, what do you do? You preview the text. That's what you do when you look at the title, the image, the blurb. That is what you're doing. Even, as I said, I love to download samples of books before I buy them. That is me previewing the text. And that is something we need to teach our students how to explicitly do. So how do you preview the text? Well, it's a, you, you ask the students to identify the topic, activate their prior knowledge, as well as predict what they think the text is about. How, how does that look? Well, to identify the topic, you as a teacher must ensure that you're leading students to read the title of the text. I just recently graded a, um, a history test and some of the students, you could tell they didn't read the, top, the title. The answer was in the title. It was a DBQ. It said what the, it, it told them what it was about. You could tell they didn't preview the text. So, actively walk the students to read in the title. If it's a book, maybe you want to flip through it and look at the different chapters. If you're like me who are doing articles, you're printing them maybe from New Zella, some places have subtitles or subtopics. That will help the students understand what they're going to be reading and it will prepare them to read and understand. I, if you watched my previous video, you know CSR is not only about um, comprehension of the text but it also helps improve content um, acquisition so doing those stages letting them look at the title the subtitles it helps another way you can um, identify the topic is to have students look at images lower grades you might flip through the picture book um, if you're teaching social studies you might add some pictures of what the topic is going to be as you teach it but I get friends. I'll, I'll go into that later. But you also look at images that are available. Another thing you should do when previewing the text is identify keywords. Point them out. If you're giving a student a 
article on the middle passage. You should at least tell them what the middle passage is beforehand. Don't just send them in there blindly and think, oh, CSR will figure it out. CSR's technique about vocabulary acquisition. No, keywords, you should introduce that from before. Once a topic is established, and the student can go into the reading knowing exactly what they're learning about today, you see comprehension increase. Now that you, you got the topic, ask students to go on to the next step. And the next step is about connecting the topic to prior knowledge or asking them to activate prior knowledge. Now, research shows that when students activate prior knowledge, they learn better. The literacy skills improve as well as you see content area knowledge increases. Um, a good way or the way CSR acts, acts us to activate this prior knowledge is through brainstorming. Remember, we're still in the before the reading stage. You're not asking them to write anything long and drawn off. We're just getting ready to read the article. So have students brainstorm what they know about the topic. You can make a little T-chart, a little, um, or you can do a brain dump, or you can just have students call it out. What do you know about this particular topic? Or the final step to previewing the text is to set the purpose. I do this by asking students to make predictions. What do you think this reading is about? However, I don't just give them an article, run through some things quickly and be like, what is this about? Teachers, we also have to teach, especially me. I'm a content teacher. I'm always teaching new content. So if I give my students a primary source document about Ethiano's memoir of the middle passage, crossing the Atlantic in the middle passage. I I have to give students some historical context. I have to explain to them what is the transatlantic slave trade. I actually have to make sure they understand the term middle passage. Remember, part of previewing the text is going over keywords. That can be done in the mini lesson. That should be done in the mini lesson. Middle passage, it is this. If I was an ELA teacher and I wanted to assign the book to, get, to kill a mockingbird, yes, students can pick it up, they can read it, they can get a school story out of it. But again, we as educators are there to teach. So I will probably go over um, the historical period, the historical context. I might go over the themes you might encounter within the books. I might even go over like the author's motivation. Why did the author write this book? That's the kind of stuff I would teach. Then students are then able to make those predictions. What do you think you're gonna be learning today? Um, how do you think it's gonna connect back to our essential question, our learning target? That is where the predictions come in. Now that I have explained what it, the, the before the reading stage is of CSR, I want to actually model how to use it in your classroom, how to engage with it in your classroom. But before you do that, I would like to ask you to like this video and subscribe to my channel. For 2023, I would like to grow my channel. My goal is to have a thousand subscribers by the end of the year, and hopefully you will be one of them. So now here's the model. This is how it looks in my classroom. I'm gonna show you how it looks like when I first introduced previewing the text to the students and how it looks right now. How do I continually um, preview the text and make sure that we're going to the next stages of CSR. All right, so what we've learned so far is previewing the text is about identifying the topic, brainstorming, and making predictions. So when I see CSR and I think of previewing the text, it might be understandable to think it's something linear. First, you have to read the title, then you have to brainstorm, then you have to predict. That is what the um, graphics want us to believe. However, that's not how it has to be done. So when you're previewing the text, it is something that you're doing throughout the learning or throughout the lesson. In this document, I'm not going to only start previewing the text when I have students read document two and document three, which are actual documents or something written whereas document one is an image. No, we do not just start the previewing there when, okay, let's start document two. You start the previewing from the very beginning. So let's review. So from the very beginning, when you're teaching, you have already started with the previewing of the text. Remember, previewing the text is about identifying the topic, brainstorming and making prediction or understanding the purpose of the reading. In this one, 
the topic is introduced right away. Students will know that the topic is New Amsterdam. It is what I tell the students when they walk in. I know teachers across America do start the lesson with the topic. Research shows that when students know the topic from the very beginning, as well as the focus question and learning target, they, ha they are more successful in the learning. And I do that right then and there. So the topic is already identified, even the purpose to some extent. <clears throat> the focus question today is how did power, wealth, and morality affect the development of colonial regions? And the colonial region here is New Amsterdam. We'll tell that to my students. No issues, no problems. They already understand what we're going to do. Our learning target is students or was students will be able to use CSR to learn the history of New Amsterdam and answer the DBQ questions. So even from the very beginning, students have an idea what they're going to be learning about and where the reading is going. They're not new to this learning thing. They know that the reading is connected to the topic and the learning target of the day. Again, it's not linear. When we're previewing the text, when we're not just thinking read the title, do a brainstorm, then make predictions. You're doing everything at once. So here, I am previewing the text by having the students watch a video on New Amsterdam and the development of New Amsterdam. As they watch this video, they will get information on why the Dutch was interested in this colony or creating a colony here. They can connect it back to prior knowledge. This is something that they did before the themes of European exploration, power, wealth, and morality. I've asked them to start activating prior knowledge and make those connections, as well as they're gonna learn the role geography played in the development of this colony. Um, if you go back, when I go back and look at the text, actually, let's go look at it now. It says, why was the colony of New Netherlands initially founded? In my mini lesson, I'm actually given that information. Then I gave some notes. I went over the key. I went over the key vocabulary. They're going to see something that says New Netherlands and they're going to see something that says New, ne New Amsterdam. They need to know why is it called New Netherlands and not just Netherlands? Why is it called New Amsterdam? They need to know some background knowledge about it. That's me identifying the key vocabulary and sharing it with them right off the bat. And they got some more um, knowledge or more content they had to learn. They learned that the Netherlands was just this small country in Europe which expanded its power and influence across the world through colonization. That might be another key um, vocab I need to go over before they start reading. It. In the document, there is an image. So not all the time your text is going to have an image. You can do like I did by adding a video or adding your own images in your mini lesson. When I first learned about CSR, I thought, oh, when they say, um, look at images, it would meant images from the book. But no, you can supplement it with your own image. In this case, my document was an image. Now you can say, oh, this is not CSR. No, it's not. It really wasn't. This is just to help with um, understanding document three. In hindsight, I think I should have put document one and three together because this connects to this one. So in this image, you see the purchase of Manhattan from the, the Lenape, right? And then down here, we have a letter about the purchase of Manhattan and what they got for what was exchanged for Manhattan. See, this is something I will preview with the, uh, my readers or with my students. I will, I, will, I will explain that connection. Now, if you go back and look at this image or graphic, it says when you preview the text, read the title, look at subtitles, images, um, keywords. In this case, there was no subtitles. It was separate documents. But we got that information. We did all that reading. We looked at the images. We connected document one to document three. Everything is good. The next step would be brainstorm. What do you already know? And then make predictions, right? Some of that brainstorm would have happened in the check for understanding. So I would have this in my lesson plan, not on the slides, but there was a check for understanding. Um, I did activate prior knowledge when I spoke about the themes of European exploration. But I also made sure I active, I checked for understanding to see if students got the new content and how they can use that new content with the reading. 
that was part of the mini lesson so again it doesn't have to look linear it doesn't have to look like so much different than what you're already doing we do so much of this already in the classroom CSR is just teaching the strategies in a specific way so that it gets done it wants us to be deliberate with what we're doing so now that we technically has finished the um, brainstorm we can now go on to make predictions this one is quite easy. The, qu the title is, Why was the colony of New Netherlands initially founded? So from this, students would know that this document is going to say why. Why was the colony founded? They got that, they know that from the title. They can even answer it from some of the work we have done before. They know some of the answers from when they watch the video. They know some of the answers from prior knowledge like why power wealth morality in this case it wasn't so much morality and they learned that in the video they also learned it in the mini lesson if I can remember what was said so they're going into the reading already with this knowledge and it'll make reading it so much easier and that was the day of me previewing the text I didn't have to teach them the other roles of CSR or the other parts I just introduced it this way and they went in with other knowledge and it made it easier for them to decipher the text. So uh, before we go on, I don't want to go through another preview in the text kind of stuff. Again, we're looking at the topic, I'm giving them information, we're going to activate prior knowledge, we're going to brainstorm in the form of check for understandings and we're going to do predictions of the text. What I wanted to show you guys is that when you do CSR, it doesn't have to take away from what you're doing in the classroom. I always start my class with a mood meter, try and figure out how students are doing. And I try to incorporate as much brain breaks as we can. Social emotional health is really important. It, we need to have that social emotional health health in order to even get through lesson. We need students focused, we need students engaged. So I do incorporate that in my lesson. And doing the CSR proce process, it doesn't take away from that, all right? Because I went on to teach about um, the transatlantic slave trade. They went on to watch a video, and then they went on to doing CSR. Again, I previewed the text. In this case, students had gotten further in CSR. They are now, at this point, they were able to identify clunks. In another video, I'll show you how to go through that method and how to teach it to your students, gist and questions. Again, those videos are coming. Now I want to try something new with my students. So lately I've been giving them do nows to start the class, um, to activate prior knowledge, just to get some data. But now I feel like my students have gotten a little bit complacent. So now I'm going to actually give them the article. It is this one from New Zella, if you can see it better in the, the colored copy. So I'm going to give them this along with this little entrance ticket on previewing the text and it's just giving them instructions of what they need to do. So I'm going to give them the article and I'm going to have them um, fill it out. So I'm going to have my students do the heavy lifting. As soon as they come into the classroom, I'm going to give them this article from New Zella that I got and they're going to be, have to uh, go through the previewing stages themselves. They're going to read the title, look at the subtitles, identify keywords their, themselves. Again, I. Again, previewing the text is a very teacher-based, teacher-led part. This is crucial for teachers to engage them. But you can have students get ready by having them um, look at the text features themselves. Then, of course, I'm going to teach my lesson. Um, I'm still going to do my SEL stuff. I'm going to go over everything. But I'm going to teach them the lesson. We're introducing the New England colonies to them. So they're going to be learning about Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Connecticut, Rhode Island. That's part of the lesson. There's more in my mini lesson. I have to go in my lesson plan to see the rest. But I'm going to speak about that. I'm going to speak about how the geography affected the development, how religious um, persecution led to them to create these colonies and how it's going to affect the development of these colonies. So all that will be in the lesson. So here's just me going through it with the kids. Um, CSR is not an added burden to the classroom. You can do it, you can do the steps and still teach what you want to teach. I can still bring in my SEL, I can still bring in all my content. It is to help you. Alright? 
again my students have been doing CSR for a while so they are ready to start engaging some of this activity on their own and I love it it's making them more independent readers now before you go I want to share where you can get resources you can always get resources about CSR on my website it is herbteacher.com herbteacher.com the urban teacher you can also get resources from my TPT store um, my store name is the urban teacher LLC I'll put a direct link to my store in my description box as well as a link to my website when I first started out I used to get a lot of my stuff from toolkit that csrcolorado.org you can get some information there as well they have videos only thing there you do have to register for an account but that's a great place I have also linked a video of students engaging in the CSR process so that you can see what the end goal is thank you for watching my video on collaborative strategic reading before the reading stage before you go, please subscribe to my channel, turn on your notifications so you do not miss another upload, and don't forget to like this video. Again, thank you for watching and see you in the next upload.